Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the Artist Conversation Series on Ilham at Home. This week, artist Hazanul Israf Idris will be joining us from his home in Penang. His work is featured in the Ilham and Singapore Arts Museum show, entitled The Body Politic and the Body. So, thank you so much for joining us, Hazanul. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. So, your work is titled Whole, or High Order Love. Chapter 2.3, Wound, Environment of Naga and Doubt. What does high order love mean to you? And is chapter 2.3 just a chapter of work in a larger series? Paul actually started um, from my third solo. I get the name after my mom passed away during Tonka Bumiana funeral. Uh, for Muslim, they need to bath uh, mayat, kan? Yeah. Um, then, yeah. what to America flip the body and then I saw a big hole uh, dekat bagian hip dia. Oh, sebab dia baru oh. uh, sebab dia baru habis or finish uh, balik dari hospital dia ada pembedahan lah. Pembedahan kecil and then dia meninggal selepas pembedahan tu. And then pulang ke rumah, mandikan dan waktu mandikan mayat itu is very sacred for Muslim. So you cannot say anything, actually. I mean, like, kalau you nampak tattoos on the bodies or whatsoever happen to the body, you can uh, silent lah. And then all the sibling duduk di sekeliling mayat tu, berdiri. And then suddenly mulut I cakap lubang. Oh. Sebab I nampak oh. that big hole. Yeah. Then ada darah, darah still bleeding coming out from the hole. And then, uh, semua orang waktu sacred process tu say, suruh I shut my mouth lah. And then, my sibling say, yeah, yeah you, you need to stop, don't, don't say anything lah. And actually, it happened in very automatic way. I tak in, in, intentionally nak cakap apa-apa waktu tu. I'm, yeah. I'm ready but, yeah, yeah mulut you tak boleh control and then, you just cakap hall, lubang kan. That is the starting point for hall lah. And then, I start to Google lah uh, because I don't know where to find the meanings ah. Uh. I I dah lost and waktu tu I tak tahu macam mana nak start anything ah uh, new, new body of work so I, I dah tak sure. And then uh, I start Google from internet lah. Uh. I just type H O L H O L E. So it coming out lots of thing lah uh, from Kurt Cobain punya wife punya band whole kan. And then coming out a uh, whole daripada perspective science mathematics religion and all that lah. so there's a one title coming out from mathematic uh, theory higher order logic so i've been shuffling lah the words lah, with my wife and we we talking about it again and again we shuffle we shuffle, shuffle and then came up higher order love so i think that is the starting point for whole lah. I'm so sorry to hear about your mom. So was inspiration behind this piece of art linked to a specific event or narrative that your mom had experienced in the past? As we call it, it's, it's all about her. It's all about her stories. It's all about her. I start to split into chapter lah because yeah. uh, for me, my mom had a dual side lah. She always telling me a lot of mythology stories, magical stuff. And the other part is very traumatic experience about war because they are other in timeline Japanese occupation and communist occupation in Malaysia around 50s, 40s or 50s. So they can selalu beritahu aku about cerita horror stories, a lot of horror stories. For environment of Naga in the which her story is about uh, racial tension that happening in Pulau Panko, somewhere in northern part of Malaysia. Lah. Yeah. She lived there for a couple of years and then this in 1959, lah, 10 years before 13 May, happened in the island uh, Rasha Riot. Lah. Ad- ada pembunuhan berlaku, ada kematian, ada orang yang dia kenal. And then between Malay and Chinese at that time. Yeah. So, 
Ya, yeah, dia ada this kind of trauma. Jadi dia keep telling me how to survive man, during that period. How to prepare yourself. She always think that it will happen again and again. Oh. So, aku aku membesar dengan dua story lah. Satu magical, satu yang sangat reality lah. She will tell me about body rotting, I mean, in in the street or yeah things yang macam itulah including my my dad my dad also during that period lah 50s kan uh, economy breakdown sangat teruk so my dad balik kerja dia kerja di on the way dia balik so dia akan jumpa orang suicide sebab yeah in the island susah jadi orang akan design untuk mati tu lebih senang Ya, yeah, aku rasa aku dengar. Jadi aku jadi immune. Immune to it, yeah. Your artwork is made up of 40 mixed media and paper panels, making it one of the largest pieces in the exhibition right now. Have you always planned on making it that size and did you manage to do it all in one go? It consists of two shows. One is in my solo show in New York, in Volta. The other one is in India Art Fair. So later on, I've been invited to Asia Contemporary Art Week in Dubai, uh, curated by Liza Ahmadi. So me and Gallery Richard uh, decide to combine these two, and in one big panel. Uh. These two places before, I mean India and New York, combined together the first time in Dubai, uh, and okay. in Ilham for a second time. Uh. Can you describe your process of making the artwork? Like how long did it take you and did you have to do a lot of research for it? During your student years, sketches and you, you yeah. draw the image first and then you try Google and then start your painting. Lah. Yeah. But nowadays I start from writing. I just simple writing, lah, one paragraph or it, it depends. If I need to draft, draft, draft lah. It's just a simple draft. I mean, hundred words or two hundred words. Then I get the overview, and then I start planning lah. Which which come first, and then later on sketch. That's exactly what what I want. But for this project, yeah, it's quite tight lah. I mean, like I'm working almost like eighteen hours a day. Wow. Uh, yeah, I sleep around six hours, walk out at six, and then start to draw. And then, yeah, it's quite intense, uh, the most yeah. intense project yeah. I've done, uh, yeah, with two assistants. Uh, but still, they're just working around six to eight hours. Uh, I'm doing the whole entire thing uh, from color, inking, and pencils. Uh. I feel like your work speaks to themes of mutation because some scenes kind of look like evolving cell bodies. Um, is there a relationship between the island landscape and biological mutation? If you see from the drawing, there's a lot of people having kind of very, very mutated looks, right? The, the island, the, the Panko Island, nowadays is a resort, Panko Resort. Yeah. And before, uh, before in the 50s, it, it's actually an island for polio people. Uh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have, I I just know two. I just know three places. One is in Panko Island. The other one is in uh, Pulau Jereja in Penang, mm-hmm. just in front of uh, Queens Bay Mall. So the other one is in Sungai Bulo. Yeah, it's already abandoned lah because yeah. they found the cure from the plant that they've been planted. Oh. Actually, it's, it's around them. Yeah, a tropical plant. I couldn't remember the names. So. Okay. Also, there's a bunch of people wearing hazmat suits and medical gear within your artwork that it almost seems like an uncanny premonition of COVID-19. What inspired you to include hazmat suits? And were you thinking of topics like contamination and isolation as well? I love to watch early British sci-fi from a uh, Hammer collection. Hammer is a company, a small company a production, but have a lot of big, really big ideas. So if you're asking me about Hazmat, yeah, it's, yeah I can say uh, Hammer production or company really inspired me and also British sci-fi. It's not American sci-fi. British have the war of the world, for example, and 
dia dia uh, dia punya disaster or dia punya idea sebab alien or alienation or contamination ni totally different from American style. Tapi if British dia from small island then dia present benda-benda yang odd in different way. But American movie must be aku suka ada satu virus movie ya lah, early 2000 macam tu. What uh, we call it they, they call it out, outbreak if you know. I've heard of it. Yeah yeah yeah. I love the suit lah. But the storyline cheesy lah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the storyline. But yeah, that of course lah. You you need to sell. But during that time lah, I'm young and then I think lah this is cool movie lah. Yeah, you're talking about something like very small. You tak nampak, tapi it's very little lah dan sangat membahaya. Itu itu the early Hazma ideas came from. Uh, that's why they so always like yellow and vibrant colors and so you boleh nampak dari jauh gitu. So there's a lot of scientific imagery laced within your work. Some elements look like DNA genomes, while others look like viruses and bacteria. What drew you to incorporate so many biological motifs? I mean, I teach it before. <laughs> like it- Working with the government thing to Sabah until 2000, yeah, for four, four and a half years. Uh. 2009, I flew to London, follow my wife. She's doing her PhD in arts. So we went there for three and a half years and also living with scientists uh, because the postgrad house we are the only family in arts and the whole surrounding is scientists so i have a lot of friends who are scientists uh, and talking about cancer like cancer and all that that kind of wow uh, penyakit yeah yeah so yeah, yeah in, in the evening in the evening for example when they came back from their labs so We are talking about the progression of what's been happening lah. One of one of my friend, for example, is uh, doing her research in in cancer, yeah. but she's using uh, jellyfish color, and from that jellyfish color, uh, there will be like a small tube that they will inject to the body, and the tube will find the cancer cell, and then. Burst, a small burst will happen when it get inside the cancer cell, and then the color from that jellyfish will detect the whole stru- structure of that cancer cell. So if you've been to aquarium, yeah. like maybe ten, ten or five years ago, there's a lot of fish yeah. that have been injected in their skin and sold to the aquarium. Really? The scientists that that have been Dapat pisahkan color from that jellyfish is Taiwan, is if I'm not mistaken, and then he took the color and inject it into uh, fish skin, and end up if you put in UV light, it's so beautiful lah, but it's actually uh, temporary and palsu lah. It's not that that fish. It's actually been injected before. <laughs> wow, that's... But yeah, it turns out. Impressive lah to normal people lah, like decent people like us. And then if we went to aquarium, or for sure that we think like, wow, this is a new species and this is yeah. cool. <laughs> But it's actually nothing. <laughs> in in Sabah, I used to live with uh, friends. They they also teacher, but one is zoologist, the other one is marine biologist, and the other one is course in mathematics ah. And the other guy is sastra or literature, so we always having fight lah. <laughs> I mean like having fight with theory and all this stuff lah. Yeah. Other yang yeah. quite religious, other yang don't believe in religious or combine these two again. So um, I I always having fight yang sangat scientific lah in a way. So must be facts. Dia tak boleh datang daripada benda yang mengarut. Jadi kita orang sel- selalu bergaduh. Dan dia orang kan interesting guy lah. Sebab aku seronok sebab dia orang bukan datang dari art world. Art world pada aku agak 
agak aku, aku dah penat lah. <laughs> aku, aku, so, ya, aku selalu ada dalam orang-orang yang macam tu sampai sampai sekarang in fact ya yeah, until now aku masih ada kawan yang working dengan department racun for example so we are talking about ketum and all this this uh, plants yang ada properties yang yang bagus tapi waktu yang sama boleh harmful to humans yeah, yeah benda-benda yang macam tu lah there seems to be a contrast between the bright vivid colors used and the nightmarish reality behind the artwork was the use of a bright color palette a personal preference or did it serve as a stylistic juxtaposition aku punya environment ko aku lahir dekat dekat dengan pantai okay. uh, rumah aku dengan pantai mungkin just like 10 minutes macam tu riding bicycle oh. so uh, aku pindah dari satu pulau ke satu pulau aku pernah duduk dekat aku lahir dekat somewhere in manjung near Uh, beaches and then I went to Sabah, Pulau, Island and then went to UK, Pulau and then now in Pulau Pinang so Pulau aku, aku, aku rasa dia inspired daripada tropical lah tropical punya colors yeah. vibrance yeah. and very bright, very vivid at the same time mm-hmm. and then yeah, aku rasa tu asal-usul color plates aku terjadi lah aku rasa So it seems like the environment you're in has a direct effect on your color choice. How has being in Penang influenced that? Aku balik Penang, aku start pakai bright color. <laughs> aku tak tahu kenapa. Penang ni dia, especially island lah. If you yeah. look at people and how they act, yeah. how the way their hairstyle, the way they walk, the way they talk. Dia memang, for me, Penang is very Jamaican lah. Dia punya colour dia. <laughs> dia punya food, dia punya colour, dia punya people lah. So aku ingat, aku, ya yeah, aku agak inspired lah duduk, duduk Penang sebenarnya. In a way. So, this is a broader question, but do you think that art, artists or art institutions can invoke societal or political change in Malaysia? Kita ada banyak golongan kan. So, Political side ada ada tempat dia lah, ada kelas yang kelas atau space yang tersendiri ya. Yeah. Yeah. Tapi kalau kau kata nak jatuhkan pemimpin di Malaysia, aku tak pasti lah guna art. Tapi ya, so, pemimpin memang guna pun. Kalau you see Najib, dia print baju, relax, relax lah bosku kan. Itu, yeah. itu semua part of it lah. Kalau if, if you see art digunakan as a tool, yeah. yes memang yeah. gunakan memes, all the video that we uploaded in YouTube, AJ sana sini, itu semua part of it lah. Yeah. Ma- 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 multimedia art lah, memang digunakan yeah. gila-gila lah, fake news and all that lah. Memang art is, is a tool, yes memang lah. Tapi kalau art in the gallery aku tak pasti, kalau art in the memes or videos memang digunakan gila-gila lah. Tapi kalau kalau kau tengok CIA uh, pernah gunakan uh, sistem artis untuk lawan Russia during Cold War sebenarnya kita sebenarnya boleh je, bo, boleh buat begitu juga tapi kalau, kalau kau tengok negara-negara tertentu ya yeah, mereka gunakan artis as, as derang punya property kan yeah. untuk tunjuk Derang, derang itu culture dan derang itu better dan derang itu maju daripada negara lain. Tapi aku tak pasti Malaysia ni dia aneh sikit. <laughs> dia, dia aneh dia aneh. Tapi aku tak tak aku tak pernah menyalahkan atau AJ atau artis yang yang berminat on certain type of works I mean like political artist yes kita ada kan yeah. dan aku rasa ya yeah, okey untuk ada okey untuk wujud lah untuk semua orang wujud lah pada aku aku tak ada masalah dengan any kind of works lah whether it's lame lah cheesy lah tak cool lah tak hype ke apa I, I don't really make I don't really care lah yeah. it's okay lah yeah. we have our own thread apa uh, uh, our own direction or our own angle that we want to touch yeah buat saja just do it
Lastly, have you been working on any art projects during MCO? The entire MOC ni, aku tak buat work langsung. Aku tak draw, aku, aku tak tahu pakai image yang keluar, aku just start everything. Why? Uh, aku tak tahu, this start, lepas tu end up lah aku buat graphite drawing, just black graphite drawing on paper. Yeah. And then uh, aku ambil pencil and gantung dekat curtain and then letak paper, just get wind to draw something like that lah. Okay. Aku just tengok aja observe. <laughs> aku tak boleh draw anymore. Uh, Until let's see lah after MOC finish, I think it will be okay lah. Well, it was great talking to you and take care. And if the audience has any further questions, feel free to message us at Ilham Gallery KL on Instagram or contact Hasanol directly. His handle will be in the description section below. So once again, thank you for joining us for an Ilham at Home session.